Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Pokemon White 2. I'm your host, Gamer. In the last episode, we did the Pokemon World Tournament, and we dealt with Team Plasma, which took up basically the entire episode. Um, so today, we're going to finish off um, just talking to all the people in the World Tournament area, and then we're going to be heading off towards the next city. Um, so, I mean, that's something to kind of look forward to. Um, for all of the X and Y players, by the way, um, basically all across the world, the Fancy the Villain uh, distribution is supposed to end on Thursday. Um, and it cannot be obtained regularly in game, for anyone who doesn't already know that. Uh, it also has a special move called Hands, and was to commemorate the 100 million GTS trade milestone. So, um, yeah, I do recommend you pick that up if you haven't already. Um, off screen, I think I already healed, but I'm going to heal again just to be double sure. Because, um, you know, can never be too sure. I mean, we did deal with Team Plasma, and I kind of did a few other things off screen as well. Um, one of those things being getting red shards. I ended up getting a bunch of other shards, of course, because you're, you're not guaranteed to get any one specific shard. It's just any of the shards. So um, I kind of just took like the Zora in there, and I purposely like used moves that would just result in me losing. Um, I mean, that was kind of a pain, but I mean, whatever. Um, all I needed was 10 red shards. And um, the reason for that was because basically the only Pokemon that has any good moves that can be learned via the red um, the red shard move tutor is um, the elemental punches, which is uh, something Lucario gets. And um, I decided to give Lucario Ice Punch because it's good against the next gym as well as a gym later down the line. Um, it's just nice to have. Uh, it's not something that you really need to go out of your way to get if you're just playing through the game, of course, um, because in the area that we're going to be coming to next, we will be able to get electric types, and I think I've already said this before, so if I didn't, then I guess spoiler alert. Um, next gym is a flying type gym, and um, yeah, I'm pretty sure you can guess who it is if you've watched through my previous Let's Play or if you've ever played through both Black and White and Black and White 2. Um, so yeah, I mean, we do progress a bit through the game. Um, you'll, I don't think I mentioned it, um, we did pass by that one area with the construction worker in the Pokemon World Tournament area. We will be revisiting that sometime later, probably after the next city. Uh, the reason for this is because there's a Pokemon in there that we can catch, but it's at a really high level, and on top of that, um, it can kind of hurt basically every Pokemon I have except for Dewlots. Um, so, I kind of want to make sure I'm more than prepared to get it. I might even save until like way later, um, we'll have to see. But, um, yeah, so now we get to progress through, um, Route 6. Uh, I don't, I think we can surf, so if you want to get that item up there, you can. I kind of forgot about that. Um, instead, we're kind of just going to progress through the route as much as we can and, um, you know, beat as many of the trainers and whatnot, because, you know, free experience. Um, speaking of experience, I also moved around some of the items. Uh, Duat is now in possession of the XP share, not Espeon, because we don't Espeon getting any more locals than it already has. And I mean, it does have side beam, so it's not like it's completely useless now. Um, a bit of, you know, obviously, between bad luck and whatever, I mean, we couldn't get confusion, and then we kind of evolved it just after it would have learned um, side beam, and we had to wait all the way up to the world tournament to reteach it. So, I mean, what can you do? But, um, yeah, so the XP show is now on Duat, just so we can kind of get the thing leveled up. Um, again, I want to have it at a decent level by the time we revisit the area outside of the World Tournament. And, um, yeah. So, in case you didn't already notice it before we got into that previous battle, um, I'll be a Sidney Grotto, and um, you can get a really good Pokemon in here, um, which is Fungus. And I honestly, like, if, it, if this was through my own personal, just casual playthrough, I would have actually caught this because it's a female. Um, every Pokemon you find in the Hidden Grotto, I think I mentioned this before, but in case I didn't, every Pokemon you find in the Hidden Grotto has their hidden ability, and Fungus has the hidden ability Regenerator, which means that if it switches out in battle, it'll get a portion of its health back. So it's a really good Pokemon, and in Generation 5, you couldn't, like, breed down hidden abilities with, like, good IVs or whatever, unless you were using a female with a hidden ability. So, finding a female Fungus with a hidden ability like that is pretty cool. Um, and worthwhile, really. It's worth getting, but, um, of course, you know, we don't have any intentions of breeding or, you know, doing anything like that because, you know, you can't really breed till the post game, and, um, we already have a grass type, so we don't really need Fungus or Amoongus. So, I mean, there's that. 
it was just basically free experience for us. Or as much as it, you know, normally it would pain me to actually kill something like that because you never know it could be useful for breeding later down the line. Of course, you know, X and Y, it's kind of like easy as shit to get. But um, anyways, remember the cross transceiver thing? Well, we found another area where we can do this. Um, Route six. If you come to this exact spot, you will receive yet another call from Nancy, or if you're the female, you know, character, then you'll get a call from the male person on the other end. I don't remember his name off the top of my head. But um, yeah, you'll get a call from either of them if you happen to step into that spot. Um, so I think that makes it, or I think it makes the fourth call that we've gotten from them now, because there's. Nibasa, Route 5, then there was Drift Vale, and then, yeah, Route 6. So we've got up to four calls now, so we have six more to go before they'll actually, like, say, hey, let's meet up in Nibasa City, you know, all that other happy crap. So, I mean, that's something that we can look forward to, I suppose. Um, now this Shelman I kind of derped on, like, for whatever reason. I wanted to see, like, how much damage Force Bomb do, because, you know, fighting on steel, because I believe Shelman's part steel. I could be wrong. But I'm almost positive it is. Um, and it did uh, resisted damage, and I, it does the same with bulldoze. I don't know, like, I, I I probably just like had a major brain fart or something, I don't know. But, um, yeah, I kind of just derped on this sh helmet. And for whatever reason, like, I don't remember normal being neutral damage to something that's part steel. Or, you know, like, anything along those lines. I, I just don't ever remember something like that, but I mean, I'm not really complaining, at least it gives me a good move that I can take out Shelmet with. I mean, why not? Um, I like how the bike's just really hard to control, at least with, um, I think it's not that it's hard to control, I think it's just the fact that because I'm using an Xbox 360 controller to connect to my emulator, um, like it receives the inputs from my actual controller. Um, a little later than I want them to, and then it causes me to just go off into different directions, and, you know, like that. Um, so, I mean, I guess those are all things. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're basically just getting experience and exploring around. Now, there's another cool thing that you can do on this route, um, and that would be here in the Weather Institute or whatever. Um, you'll notice there's a bunch of deerling in here. Um, Basically, Sharon's not going to say anything relevant, he's just going to give a surf, which is the only relevant thing he actually bothers doing. Um, so, I mean, that's cool. We have a very good uh, base power water move that we can now give to um, Duat, so that's, that's always nice. Uh, it's going to be kind of useful for the um, charge stone cave when we get through, or not through, but to it. Um, I mean, it, all the bull doors and whatnot, and having more water moves is nice. I probably should have gotten, gotten rid of Razor Shell, but I mean, whatever. It, it's fine. Um, so we're just going to talk to all the NPCs here, but first we're going to talk to this one. He has apparently a rare deerling that he wants us to take care of, um, so we will take care of it, even though we're never going to use it in the sled split. Um, so what's cool about it, it has the hidden ability Ser or Serene Grace. Um, which is cool. Um, it boosts the likelihood of, you know, added effects, so, you know, if you happen to use, like, you know, it can't use it, obviously, with something like Ice Punch, it would have an increased chance of, you know, freezing. So, I mean, that's kind of cool. Um, other moves like Scald or whatever would get an increase to their chance of burn, stuff like that. So, it's a really good ability to have, um, and, it's worth picking up. I mean, I, I never really used Saw's Buck. I never really liked it all that much either. But, I mean, free hidden ability is free. And I think that was also the only way you could get the hidden ability. I, mean, I could be wrong. Um, it might be in the hidden grottos. I don't really remember. Uh, if it is, it's probably in one of the forest areas. But, um, I mean, it's not like it's any, anything that anyone really cares too much about, anyways. But, um,. Something nice to just have, right? Can't really complain about free stuff. But, um, I mean, it, it's easy enough to just get. You kind of have to go in there to get surf, anyways, because you're kind of forced to. But, I mean, it's just something nice to have. And I'm kind of more happy about the fact that we got surf, just because, you know, being able to move around and do whatever through water areas and all that, it's just something that I would. 
sort of have. Now that I think about it, we may actually need to backtrack to um, drift down in the next episode. Because I believe there's something else that we can get, and it requires us to be able to surf outside of drift fail. So uh, I'll have to kind of check that off screen, and then um, if it's important, then we'll go back and do it on screen. Otherwise, it'll just be like, well, off screen, if you go back to drift fail, there's an area you can surf, and so on and so forth. So, I mean, there's that, I suppose. But, um, yeah. I think you get something like, I think there's like a TM or something you can get up by surfing in drift fail. I don't really remember. Uh, it could be something like sky drop or, um, I don't know. Like, it just. You could be scald for all I know. But. I mean, you kinda understand what I mean. Like, I think there's something like a TM there. Uh, I remember doing it through um, my original playthrough when I played through the Japanese version of the game. And, I mean. Free stuff is free. I, I always like to pick up. Like, okay, anyone that doesn't know me well enough, I'll tell you right now. Whenever a new game comes out, and this is gonna apply to Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby, assuming that I don't have my capture card by then, and end up deciding to just do a let's play and going on the journey with you guys rather than just, you know, blowing through the game all on my own. And, you know, of course, if I get my capture card, I'll probably wanna do an X, or X and Y run first, and um, do Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby. But, um,. I don't know, we'll see how that works. I'm working on getting my capture card. Uh, if you guys really want to help me with that, um, there is a link in the description. You can donate to me via PayPal. I don't care how much you donate, it could be a penny. Anything is useful to me. Um, I would really like to do a lot of other games. I don't mind spoiling this for you. If I get my capture card sometime within the next, the next year, um, I would really like to do a Let's Play of Ocarina of Time 3D. Uh, it's a game that I really, really love. I'm sure it's something that a lot of people would enjoy watching me do. Um, it's something different, of course. It's different from Pokemon. But um, I've never wanted to make this just a purely Pokemon channel. I just... I have a lot more in-depth experience with things like the Pokemon games. Um, Legend of Zelda, The Ocarina of Time. Um, I've played that several times. I've watched people speedrun it. I've seen glitches. I've seen all kinds of stuff with it. It's a really fun game. There's even glitches in the 3D one, and I wouldn't mind showing those to you guys. Of course, that'll all happen if I end up getting my capture card in the next year. So, I mean, again, that's something to look forward to. Um, not to mention, I'm sure that a lot of people want to see me do X and Y, uh, Alpha Sapphire, and Omega Ruby. I'm sure that a lot of people want um, videos for Smash Brothers. I, I, even I really want to do that. It'd be nice to have my capture card before Smash Brothers comes out, because then I'd be able to just instantly start uploading, or uploading that for you guys, start fighting, you know, doing the like, you know, like, fighting shit with everyone, like take, you know, battle, fight requests, whatever, and then upload them, you know, stuff like that. It would just be a lot of fun to be able to do that, and I can't really do that without a capture card, so I kind of want to get one um, as soon as possible, if possible. Um, but yeah, I guess I should stop rambling. Um, that cry that you heard and the Pokemon you see in front of us should be very familiar. Um, the cave that we caught him in in black and white happens to be nearby. Uh, that was the Pokemon Cabalion, who is basically the leader of the three Musketeers in the game. The Musketeer Legendaries, uh, Cabalion, Verizion, and um, Tarakion. They will appear before you throughout the entire game. Um, well, okay, like not entire. Obviously we didn't encounter them in the way at the very beginning of the game. but. Um, like, you'll encounter them here and there throughout the game, and um, the interesting part is, is you don't have to go into any caves for them. Uh, they all just happen to just stand outside. Cool thing about them as well, if you happen to kill them the first time, they will reappear later in the game after you beat the Elite Four, I believe. And they will be at a much higher level. They will be at like in the 60s or something. Um, I think it's like 65, maybe 68, I'm not entirely sure. Um, one of the two, I, I'm almost positive of that, but um, I mean it's, it's it's cool that they kind of come out and confront you themselves rather than you having to go to them, you know, like, hey, yeah, hi, Cavalian, Karakian, and Verizion. Um, the cool thing is you don't have to go to any of the areas in the post game to get to either, they will all be in the main part of the game, so you don't have to worry about, you know, whether or not you want to actually have one of them on your team. The thing is, we already have a steel fighting type on our team, so we don't really need Cabalion for our team, and 
the fact that every other musketeer is part fighting. We kind of already have a fighting tape on our team, so uh, and we'll catch them, of course, but we're not going to have this season for our team. So, I mean, it's kind of a thing, but yeah. So, I believe that after this trainer, we're going to head up towards um, Charged Stone Cave. We're not going to be doing it today, though, but we will definitely be making sure that we can get started on it immediately, you know, upon starting the next episode, of course. So, um, I mean, like, as you can see, like, there's nothing else in the area there, so, um, yeah. In the next episode, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going through Charged Stone Cave and most likely reaching the next city. Uh, this cave's not very long, so, I mean, there's that. Uh, hopefully we'll get our next team member in the next episode as well, so yeah. Be sure to stay tuned for all that. Uh, if you haven't already, don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and until next time, this is the Pokemon Gamer, signing out.